the light within us. And darkness disappears. And we pray that that's what will happen this morning. Amen. The entrance of your word will bring light. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that you will make your word to reach down into our spirits. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody? Amen. Okay, so let's have a seat. Amen. Okay, so we started talking about um, how to be led by the Spirit or how to hear the voice of God. And one of the few things I want you to know very quickly is that the church is a place where you supply knowledge about spiritual things. In other words, the church is a school of the Spirit. And the command in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2, is feed the flock of God. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15, the Bible says, I will give you pastors after my heart that will feed you with wisdom and with knowledge and understanding. Amen. And 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2 said, Feed the flock of God which is among you. So when we are teaching God's word, it is one of the core things that the Bible expects us to do as people that are placed in custody of God's flock. Amen. Amen. So the word flock is used. In Acts chapter 20, verse 27, the word flock is used in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2. And why the word was used was basically because the, the, the group of believers are expected to be leadable. God deals with people that are guidable. God does not like to be talking to somebody that is stubborn. And we see that very clearly in the book of Exodus, chapter 33. So um, Moses was talking to God, and God was saying he will not go with the people. And Moses was begging, begging God to go with them. And God told Moses that these people are very stubborn. I am not going to go with them because if I go with stubborn people, I will destroy them. I don't want to do what I will not like. It's just another way of saying that. God does not like dealing with stubborn people. And who is a stubborn person? Proverbs chapter 29, verse 1. What does the Bible say there? I, I, I need you to help me very fast this morning. So if you are a fast Bible opener or a fast Bible reader, you will have to quickly help me open to those places. He that is being open reproved. And adnet is neck. I don't know why why the word neck has to come in. Hardnet is neck. Hardnet is neck. I don't know why the word neck is the issue. Oh wow nuki. That's the meaning of hardnet is neck. Instead of hardnet is heart. Amen. He that is often reproved and does what? What does the Bible say? So that was exactly what God was saying when he was saying, I will not go with these people. Okay, so that was exactly what God said to Moses. Let's go to Exodus chapter 33. I read verse 1, and the Lord said to Moses, Depart, go ye up ends, 
thou and the people which thou hast brought out of the land of Egypt unto the land which I swear unto Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob, saying, Unto thy seed will I give it. And I will send an angel before thee, and I will drive out the Canaanites, the Hamorites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Evites, and the Jebusites, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in the midst of thee, for thou art a stiff naked people, lest I consume thee in the way. So God does not like talking to somebody that when he's telling them something, they are not changing. He offers them up for destruction very fast. The Bible says that God is slow to anger, but he does not like dealing with people that are stubborn. So, if you look at the picture he paints about the group of disciples or group of believers, he called them flock. Flock is group of sheep. Sheep are so easy to lead such that if you point a stick like this, they just move in that direction. You don't have to beat them. They are no goats. They are sheep. And so God likes to talk to somebody that will obey. Somebody that will listen to what he's saying. And part of, part of what God has commanded pastors to do is to teach and feed the flock of God. And you see, I want you to open to that scripture. First Peter chapter 5, verse 2. Let's open to that scripture. I keep wondering. I said, why will the Bible use that word among you? So that means there are some people that are among you. They are very stubborn. When you teach God's word, their mind is already set in disobedience. First Peter chapter 5, verse 2. The Bible says, and to the elders, um, okay, yeah, I thought um, we're going to have that. So I read from, uh, let's, let's have it here. Okay. Um, to the elders which are among you, to the, the elders which are among you, First Peter chapter 5, let me read verse 1. Um, I exalt who are also, who am also an elder, a witness of the suffering of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Verse 2, feed the flock of God which is among you. Amen. Amen. So when someone say, Tell the children that are among you to go upstairs. It means he's not referring to everybody, right? He's only referring to who? The children. So when the Bible says, feed the flock of God that are among you, it means that there are some people among them that are not flocks of God. And so when you come to church, there are different kinds of people in the church. People that want to obey God's word, people that want to disobey God's word, people that want to change, people that are not going to listen, people that are just coasting along, people that, different kinds of people. And that's why it's important for you to understand who you are relating with in church. Because everybody did not come for the same purpose. The motive at the back of different people's mind, you don't know. You are only sure of what is in your own heart. The Bible even commanded the elders or the pastors, as it were, to feed the flock of God. Not to even bother with other people that are not willing to listen to God's word. Feed the flock of God, which is among you. How about the other ones? Leave them alone. Feed the flock of God, which is among you. So the church is a sensitive place. And that's one of the things that, you know, the church is all about. They are to show you the things of the spirit. They are to show you the things that is going to make you come into God's purpose for your life. 
And so that's part of the reason why we emphasize on the feeding aspect. So that we don't end up doing the things that, you know, God has not emphasized on. God has emphasized on his word, feed the flock of God which is among you. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15, can you give me that? Feed the flock of God which is among you. It's an emphasis. So it's very important to stay with God's word. Everywhere Jesus went to, before he would do healing, miracles, signs, and wonder, one of the things he does is that he teaches. He will teach the word, he will preach the word. And teaching and preaching the word is what leads to deliverance and healing. So see what the scriptures say, and I will give you pastors according to my heart, not according to your heart. You know, the Bible says they will heap up teachers after their own desires. I don't know whether you have read that place. So there's a teacher after what people want to hear. There's also a teacher after God's heart. It all depends on what somebody is opting for. There's a teacher according to God's heart. There's a teacher according to people's heart. It is what you want to pick. And the internet is so vast these days that you can pick anyone you like. You can decide not to hear the truth and be following lies and fables because you have a lot of teachers. It's like what I'm saying is strange to some people. They've not seen that scripture before. Each time you give me that kind of face, it makes me want to open the scripture and show you that it's not my words, it's the word of God. I will give you pastors according to my... It is God that is talking there. Which shall what? Which shall do what? God did not call it teach you. He called it feeding. We are the one that is calling it preaching and teaching. God calls it feeding. New Testament, feed. First Peter 5, 2. Old Testament, feed. It is feeding. Why? Because he's talking about your spirit man. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Feeding. We shall feed you with what? And what? And understanding. So it's important for you to understand the reason for the emphasis on God's word. God expect us to do that. Okay, so for some times now, we've started a study on how to hear the voice of God. One of the most important things you will need in your life is the voice of God. God does not expect that you will be a sheep and then you don't know his voice. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. They know my voice. The voice of a stranger will they not hear. I declare that will be your portion. Amen. You will know the voice of God. Amen. You will not know the voice of a stranger. Amen. And so we've spoken about quite a number of things. And we started by saying that man is a spirit having a soul living in a body. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23. So First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 22 say abstain from every appearance of evil. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, say, And the very God of peace shall sanctify you holy, your spirit, your soul, and your body. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. So he spoke about spirit, soul, and body. Meaning that abstinence actually affects your spirit, it affects your soul, and it affects your body. Okay? Now, let me leave all of that and come over to the fact that you are a spirit. And God wishes to communicate with you through your spirit as a child of God. God is a spirit. You are a spirit. 
when you gave your life to Christ, it puts the Spirit of God inside you. The Spirit of God makes God who he is. So, Spirit of God and Spirit of God inside you can easily connect. LG Remote and LG TV can easily connect. So, God wants to communicate with you by his spirit. God wants to be able to tell you, turn to channel 7 by the remote. He doesn't like a situation whereby they are looking for where to be pressing your button here. No, he doesn't like it. Where they are pressing your button here, pa, 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 no. He wants to communicate with you by remote, wireless, anywhere you are. That's what he wants to do. Not by pressing the button. God never said he's going to communicate with us by our flesh. Please don't forget that. He never said he's going to communicate with us by our soul. Please don't forget that. Very, very critical to what we are studying. As many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So, being led by the Spirit is what God is after. Remember Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27. The Spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Proverbs, Psalms 18, verse 28. Another version says, before I go to Psalm 18, verse 28, another version of Proverbs 20, 27 says, the spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord. Okay, so can we have Psalm 18, verse 28? Psalm 18, verse 28, anybody, anybody, anybody? Please help me. Okay. Um, can I have King James? For thou will light my candle. Please hold on there. Another person give me King James Version, Proverbs 20, 27. Another person, please stand to your feet. Give me Proverbs 20, 27. Okay, King James Version, King James. Okay, so go ahead. Read for me. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. So read for me. For thou will light my candle. Will light my candle. So look at it. The spirit of man is equal to light. Is equal to what? Candle of the Lord. So for thou will light my candle. So let's replace it with what the candle of the Lord is. For thou will light my what? For thou will light my spirit. You are not following me. I need you to follow me. Proverbs 20, 27. Read for me again. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. The spirit of man is equal to candle of the Lord. Everybody say that. Okay, so look at this place now. So, what do you have here? Talk to me, everybody. Okay, let's stand to our feet. What, is, what do we have here? Okay, so if we have candle here, so what is Proverbs 20, 27? Please read for us. The spirit, of man is the, of the, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Okay, so replace candle here with what? Oh yeah, so let's go now. Is it becoming clear now? So when God lights your spirit, what does that mean? Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So when God lights your spirit, that means there was darkness before. So if God lights your spirit, the Lord will enlighten my what? So that is what God intends to do, to lead us by our spirit. Amen? Amen. 
So very, very important, you have to master that God is going to speak to us primarily by his spirit, and he's going to be communicating with our spirit, not our flesh, not our brain, not our senses, but our spirit. Please don't forget, it's very important. Don't forget, it's very important. Not our flesh, not our brain, but our spirit. Please, it's very important, don't forget it. As many are led by the spirit of God, they are what? So God expects that your spirit is alive. God expects that you take the things of the Spirit very seriously so that he can communicate with you. So God is going to guide us primarily by our Spirit. Very, very important. Don't forget it. Very, very important. So I want to encourage you that you should walk on how your spirit connects with God. Because even after this teaching, and we give you some basic things to do, you or we tell, we share together some basic things to do, you have to do them. Because direction is very, very important. Please, let's have our seat. Amen. Amen. Okay, so... So we've spoken about quite a number of um, quite a number of ways that God communicates with us through our spirit. So we first said that dream is a general place or is a general platform that God used to reach out to unbelievers and believers. And we said that the reason why God reached out to unbelievers is because of the destiny He puts inside them. But when it comes to critical issues, they cannot pick the voice of God on their lives. Okay? So it's very important for you to understand the difference. And then we started the second category that God is going to speak to us um, through different means, by his spirit. So what was the first one we brought out on our note? The first one was what? So when we go to pray, God speaks to us. Amen? Amen. So the communication takes place. Amen? Amen. So we say that when you are praying, pictures come to you. And pictures is one of the ways that God communicates in the spirit. Pictures are spirit language. Don't forget it. Images are spirit language. Videos are spirit language. I don't know whether I'm communicating. When the Spirit of God wants to communicate with you, part of the way he communicates is that you see images. Is that he gives you a video, what you call dream, what you call vision. is what we call video here. What we call image. Yeah. That's what it is. Amen. So, while you are praying, you can have pictures. You can see images. While you are praying in the spirit. And then we saw the case of Peter, isn't it? And who again did we look at? We saw the case of Peter. We saw also the case of Cornelius. Amen. Amen. So, Cornelius was praying and he saw he saw a video, what we call a video clip. And in the video clip, he saw a man with a white clothes telling him to go somewhere and call somebody. I want you to look at it. On a normal day, he did not know Peter before. He does not know who Peter is. He does not know whether Peter is existing. It was in that revelation that they told him, go call a man called Peter. He does not know before, sir. And it was that revelation that led to him receiving the Holy Ghost. And he was the first man to receive the Holy Ghost as a Gentile. 
with his household, with his people. Why? Because he received a video while he was praying. The video claim came to him, the video clip. Angel stand there, he was, you know, live recorded video. I'm just trying to bring our own terms and terminology into what we are saying so you can get the picture. Meanwhile, on the other hand, Peter saw an image. The image came down with different kinds of animal, and it had a voice, audio. You know, on YouTube, you can have image and audio combined together. That is not video. So that was what he had. He said, Peter, arise, eat. Again, arise, eat. He said, not so, Lord, not so, Lord. The thing was taken away. Okay? And that brings me to say that I want to quickly bring this point out, and I believe that that will help us to an extent. Um, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be helpful to somebody because I see the Holy Ghost pointing at it. And I think because of that, I need to read our chapter 9. Or Acts chapter 10. Okay, Acts chapter 10. Let's go. Acts chapter 10, everybody. And let's go to verse, uh, verse 11. And, and saw heaven open. Okay, let me read from verse 9. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew near unto the city, Peter went upon the house top to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry. And would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance, and he saw heaven open, and a vessel descending unto him, as it had a great sheet neat at the four corners, and he let it down to the head, wherein were all manners of four footed beasts of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and the fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill, and eat. And Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake to him again the second time, What God had clean that call not common. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. How many times was it done? Please, everybody, look at me. How many times was it done? Three times. three times. When you see a revelation two, three times, it means it is very, very close. It means it's what? Okay, and I can show you that also in the case of Joseph and Pharaoh. How many times did Pharaoh see the revelation? Okay, you are, you are going to make me go there now. We have to go and read it so that we will not be using head to, to do the Bible. Genesis chapter, uh, okay, so that should be Genesis 39, Genesis 40. But I think that should be 39, it started 39. Okay, so it started at 39, and um, let's look at chapter 40. Chapter 40, let's go to chapter 40. I read from verse 1. And it came to pass after this thing that the butler and the king of the Egypt and his baker had offended the Lord of, okay, um, if I read that, let me read from verse 4. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them, and the continued a season inward and the <clears throat> and the dream a dream both of them each man his dream in one night each man according to his interpretation of his dream the butler and the baker of the king of egypt which were bound in the prison okay so and that was the first set of dream that he interpreted I want us to fast forward to verse chapter 41. Let's fast forward to chapter 41. And it came to pass at the end of, um, okay, so let me read verse 4. No, let me read from verse 1. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, 
he stood by the river, and behold, there came up out of a river seven well-fed kin and fat-fledged, and they fed in the midwell. And behold, seven other kind came up after them out of the river ill-favored and lean-fledged, and stood by the other kin upon the brink of the river, and the ill-favored and lean-fleshed kin did eat up the seven well-favored and the fat kin. So Pharaoh awoke, and he slept and dreamed the second time, and the seven hairs of corn came up, one stalk, rank and good. And behold, seventeen ears blasted with the east wind sprang up after them. And the seventeen ears devoured the seven rank and full ears. And Pharaoh awoke and behold, it was a dream. That was number what? Number two. And it came to pass in the morning, and the spirit was troubled. And he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dreams, but there was none that could interpret unto Pharaoh. Okay, fast forward now. Um, let's go to verse 13. <clears throat> and it came to pass. Okay, so um, that was when they were. Okay, verse, verse 15 now. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamt a dream. There is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou can understand a dream to interpret. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river. And behold, there came up of the river seven kind, flat fatched and well favored. And they fed in the midwall, and behold, seven other kind came up after poor and very ill, favored and lean flesh, such as I have never saw in all kind of Egypt for badness. And the lean and the ill favored king did eat up the four seven fat king. And when they had eaten them up, it came, it could not be known that they did eat them, but they still ill fat favored as at the beginning. So I awoke and I saw in my dream. Okay, so he gave him the second one. So let's start from where Joseph started speaking. Verse 25. And Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. God has shown Pharaoh what he's about to do. The dream of Pharaoh is how many? Even though he had two dreams. The revelation that Peter had three times was the same one. Even though he had it how many times? So a dream or a revelation can come in different format referring to the same thing. Or it can come in the same format referring to the same thing. Whenever you see it like that consistently, see what it means. And verse 7 and verse 26, chapter 41, verse 26. The seven good kind, um, okay, God has shown, verse 25, and Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. God has shown Pharaoh what he's about to do. Amen. Amen. Verse 32, for the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God. And God will shortly bring it to pass. Please, everybody read that in your Bible. It is because what? It is because what? It is because what? Why was it doubled? And God will do what? So when you see it two times or three times, it's because it's coming to pass very, very shortly. And so in the case of Peter, Peter had the revelation. The moment he came out from the revelation, they started knocking. Co, 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 co. People are waiting for you. Who are the people? The people of the revelation you saw. Shortly coming to pass. Please don't forget Whenever you see anything like that, 
is because it's coming to pass very, very shortly. So we saw that Peter saw a revelation while he was praying. Acts chapter 13, verse 2 and verse 3, while they were praying, they also receive a voice. So when you are praying, you can see a movie, you can see an image, you can hear a voice, you can receive a picture. Amen. Amen. So Acts chapter 13, verse 2. As they fasted and prayed, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Paul. As they, as they fasted and ministered to the Lord, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Paul. And verse 3, verse 3 now says something. Look at what verse 3 said. And when they had fasted and prayed. So when you are fasting, it enhances your spiritual sensitivity. You are easily taken to the spirit realm to see things easily compared to when you are not fasting. Why? Because you are not giving much space to the flesh. You have denied the flesh. You have paid more attention to the spirit. And so it is a lot easier. It is just like when you have a battery inside the remote and the battery is a new battery very strong battery and the um everything is clear there is no uh what's it called there is no um, there's no problem with the system everything is new is brand is okay so when you use it you discover that it works very easily so please take note of that when we are praying god speaks to us what's the second one Okay, by making his word popping up in our spirit, John 14, 26, he said, he will remind you everything that I have taught you. The Bible now says in the book of Acts chapter uh, 11, between verse 5 to 16, he says, and they remember the word of the Lord Jesus. That's another way God speaks to us. So you are praying about a particular issue now, and you see a scripture along that line pop up in your spirit. God is already speaking to you. What's number three? Inner peace. That one works as a traffic light. You move closer to where God asks you to go, you have the peace. You move away, you are troubled in your spirit. That is another way God speaks to us. What's the fourth one? Constraints and restraints. Is similar to inner peace, okay? You, you, you are moved to do things. You are promptly, okay? That's another word for constraint and restraint. You are what? Promptly to do something. And then you are troubled when you decide to do that thing that God does not want you to do. Let's assume you are in a relationship with a wrong person. Anytime you are meeting or you are thinking about that person, you are troubled. Every time. You are troubled. Every time. And after you are troubled like that, like three times to five times consistently, seriously disturbed. And you keep on ignoring that. It will normalize. And that's how people enter into permanent error. Because the spirit of God will not always strive with what? He will not strive with you. Once he has spoken to you, he's not going to be speaking to you forever and ever. Say in the name of Jesus, I will pick the voice of God at the very first time. So what's another way God speaks to us? Okay, so we can have Holy Ghost dream that we call vision and uh, vision of the night. What's another one? To be grieved in the spirit. And we saw that in the case of Art of the Apostle. And I was talking to you that that also happened in the case of um, in the case of uh, Phineas. Numbers chapter 25. So let's see Numbers chapter 25. Numbers 25. So, see what the Bible says here. The Bible is saying in verse 
from verse 1, so an Israelite abode in Shechem, and the people began to commit wisdom with the daughters of Moab. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one of his men that has joined himself to bear Paul. And bear Paul. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought into, into his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of the congregation of Israel who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. God was correcting them and he was telling them, everybody that has joined idol, bring them out, hang them, and kill them now. That was taking place. And yet, what God was correcting them on, somebody else was strolling in with a woman. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, in the presence of Moses. And you know, there are people like that. They behave like that in the church. Don't be, don't be this kind of person that you want to please people. Stand for God. Turn to somebody and say, stand for God. Stand for God. Don't, don't. Why, why will you please people? For what? Many of us that are young people, we like to fall for peer pressure. If God is going to do something tangible with you, you have to be a man that can stand for truth. You have to be a man that can do what? Stand for truth. God does not use people that cannot stand for the truth. You have to be able to stand for the truth. In the eyes of, there are people that will become, they will want to do what is, they know that this thing is wrong. And that's what they want to do in the church. You just finish preaching now. Amen. Amen. You just finish preaching now on that matter. That's what they want to do next week. And they want to prove it that I will do it. I will be the first person to represent that bad thing here. They don't send the pastor. They don't send all of you hearing God's word. That was the attitude of that guy. What was the response of Phineas? So look at verse 7. Okay, so let me read verse 6 again. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought his... And brought his... Brethren, a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. I want you to get the picture before I read from verse 7. Let me go back to verse 2. And they called the people unto the sacrifice of their God, and the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined himself to be a poor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord might be torn away from Israel. God was still disciplining, he was still putting a discipline across to them for the bad thing they have done. And somebody was doing the very thing that God was correcting them against. So what does the Bible say in verse 7? And when Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through the man of Israel and the woman threw her belly. Do you understand? They are together. So the javelin, pooh! It moved from the man to the woman, and it came out from the woman's side. I 
I could, I could perceive, I could perceive the way it went there. Can't you see we are still talking about that matter? And see what the Bible says. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through her belly so that the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. And those that died in the plague were 20 and 4,000. People were being dealt with already in that sin. And then some people now started it again. Don't be that kind of person in the church. Rather, be the person that will stand for the truth. See what the Bible says in verse 10. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, atoned my rod from the children of Israel. He has committed murder. Is that what is there? No, talk to me. He has committed murder by killing the man of Israel and his girlfriend. He has done what? Please, let's stand and read the Bible. Let's stand and read the Bible. Let, let's read it. Let's go. Read on. Next verse. Amen. The reason why God will not bring some people into his program is because of what they supposed to stand for and they never stood for it. Because when God wants to test whether he should give you a bigger thing, he will test you with small things. He won't test you with big things. Mm -mm. That's why some people will never touch the word of God till they die. Why? He tested them with small things. They failed. And God is not partial. Mm -mm. He's not partial. He can forgive you but he will test you. If you are not qualified, he won't give you the place. He will forgive you. Mary has to meet a condition for her to carry the child Jesus. If he fails to carry, to meet that condition, God will forgive her. But she will not be the one that will carry Jesus. So I want you to understand that some of these things, God will not even communicate them. He will not even say them. He will just keep quiet all about it altogether. And he will keep on doing what he wants to do. And it will be normal. May you not miss the beautiful plan of God for your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So see what the Bible says. Let's, let's read again. Um, verse 12. I give unto him what? God made a covenant with him. Immediately. One of the gifts that is great that God can give a man is a covenant. Why? It is like saying... Keep going to the bank for the next four years. Withdraw any amount I have paid. It is like that. That's an easier way for me to say it. I have given him my, my what? Now, by singular action of standing for the truth. By one action. By what? Look, there are things that we do that can make God to change his mind on the original plan he has for us. And you would think, ah, she be, ah, it does not matter. It does not matter. We have to be careful when we have to relate with God. There are some things he will not show you by revelation. He will, not, he will just make a decision because of what you have done. So God looks at what you are doing. 
So forget that song that say it doesn't look at what I'm doing. Ko wo bi mo she wuwa, o wo bi bobo she wuwa. Praise God. And he caught a covenant with this guy. And that covenant did not only affect him, he affected his children. Can we just read the next verse? Verse 13. was zealous for his God. He took a stand for God. That's the meaning of being zealous for the Lord. When people are doing, uh, maybe I will stand or I will not stand, he said, no, I will stand. You will hate me, hate me. I will stand for God. I will stand for the truth. Do you know that that day that he did that thing, there are some of those guys there that will be saying, uh-uh, uh-uh, take it easy now. Don't you think so? No, talk to me. Don't you think so? Now, those take it easy group and what God has said, which one, which one should leave please out of the two of them? It makes more sense to have a covenant of peace for about four years than to stay with um, Take It Easy group. I don't think I want to do anything with Eliezer again. Eliezer that is better than you in fourth generation. He doesn't need you. So someone can be grieved in the spirit. That's actually the main lesson that we are looking at. So that's the Old Testament leg of the Acts chapter 16. Amen? Amen? Please let's have a seat. So someone can be grieved in the spirit and that can be a direction of a leading. Okay? Praise God. Okay, so uh, do we have any other point after that? Art steering. So let's begin to look at that today. Extra chapter 1 verse 15. So God can steer your heart. You can have a heart pumping. Extra chapter 1, verse 15. And I want somebody to read for me Agai chapter 1, verse 4. Somebody else, Agai 1, 4, Ezra 1, 15. Anybody that has found it, please let me know. Okay. I'm waiting. And this house lie waste. Okay, so give me Ezra chapter 1, verse 15. So if, if you read, if you read the whole of that Ezra chapter 1, you will see where the Bible was talking about the fact that they need to arise and walk towards the building of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So it was time for them to do something towards the building of the Lord, and God steered the heart of the people. That also happened when um, um, God was going to tell the people to uh, bring resources for the building of the tabernacle. And when Moses spoke to them, you discovered that their heart was steered up to um, give towards the things of God. Now, this usually happens most times when it has a relationship with giving. Most times, not all, all the time, but mostly it used to go with um, when it has to do with giving. You see your heart is teared up to give. Something is mentioned. That's how God leads people. Your heart is teared. It's teared your heart to give. So most times in the scripture, when you hear the word steering, it goes along with giving. And let me say that if God has not led you to give, then you should check the spirit that you say is inside you. Because when you begin to follow the spirit of God, it will bring you to a point that it will ask you to give what is going to pain you. Yeah. What you will give, it will ask you to it will pain your body. It will pain your flesh, but it's a profit for your future. 
the Spirit of God will bring you there. If you say the Spirit of God is inside me and is leading you, one day we come. The Spirit of God will say something like that. And when you look at it, you say, ah, it may not be that you are even hearing a message. It may be that you are hearing a message. But that heart steering will be there. Okay, so I will mention that. Do you want to read that strap for me? Okay, read verse 5 for me. Whose spirit God steered. That's another word. That's verse what now? Verse 5. Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin and the priest and the Levites with all of them. Whose spirit God has. Please give me another version. Another version say God steered. So God can steer your spirit to give. Can steer your spirit to give. He can raise your spirit to, to, to give. Praise God. So please take note of that. So give me Agai chapter 1 verse 14. Agai chapter 1 verse 14. So it is Agai 1 14. Okay? Not Agai 1 4. It's Agai 1 14. And Ezra 1 5, not Ezra 1 15. Please correct that. Okay, go ahead, please. And the Lord steer up the spirit of Zerubbabel. So when it comes to doing God's work, you see God steer up your spirit. You are sleeping on your bed and they say it is time for evangelism. And God steer up your spirit. <laughs> Praise God. So it is one of the ways that God leads us. He steer up our spirit. Okay. So I haven't said that. That is... Number what now? Number seven. Number eight. God can lead us through impression. God can lead us through what? Impression. It is also called burden. Everybody say burden. So you can have a weight. And as you have that weight, you can begin to cry. Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 1. So the whole of the book of Habakkuk was written by the weight of God on the spirit of prophet Habakkuk. And the more he writes, the lesser the body. The more he writes, the lesser the body. Until he finished writing and the whole body finish, finishes. So the same thing, a body can come to us doing something for God. And when you do it, the body lifts a little. You do it again, the body lifts a little. You do it again, the body lifts a little. Until everything is done and the body is finally lifted. It's called impression. The body which Habakkuk the prophet did see. The body which Habakkuk the prophet did see. Okay, give me another version apart from King James. This is the message. This is the message. That what? The Lord that the Lord reveals. So, burden is another way of a message that God used to speak to us. A burden on your spirit. So, God may want to give you a walk to a particular place. And it comes in form of a body. Amen. Amen. Okay, so let's look at um, Nahumi. Nahum, chapter 1, verse 1. Nahum, chapter 1, verse 1. I don't think there's anything like Nahumi in the Bible. Nahum. Uh -huh. Made me remember the pastor that said Goliath chapter 4. <laughs> Amen. Uh, the burden of Nineveh, 
the book of the vision of Nahum, the echo shite. Now, if you look at it very critically, can, can we have another version? Can you give me amplified? Give me amplified. So, you can receive a burden from God. A burden about a particular thing. The burden or the oracle, the thing to be lifted up. So, it's heavy on your heart to do a particular thing for God. And when the heaviness has been there for a while and you are not responding, God will take it away and put it on somebody else. So, the whole of the book of Habakkuk and the whole of the book of Nahum, those men did not see God. God was not telling them, oh yeah, where's your Bible and your jota? Will that Bible be enough to write chapter 1 to 4? What I want to tell you is long ago. Mm -mm. That was not what they are hearing. It was just a body, no voice, no nothing. And they picked Bible. And they begin to write according to the spirit of the Lord. And the body was going. 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 And the body lifted when they were done. That was what God wanted to say. You will just know what God wants you to do when you have a body. And that leads me to that spiritual knowing. That's another way God speaks to us. It's called perception. It's called what? It is just a knowing in the spirit. You just know. Who told you? You don't know. How did you know? You don't know. But you just know. You just know that this person is lying. You look at his face and he's lying to you as a pastor and you're looking. Shout it. Dinner for me. The body dinner up to shout my love. Praise God. You know that this guy is lying. It's a way that God speaks to us. It's called perception. You can perceive. But this happens when you have grown in the matters of the spirit. When you have grown very well spiritually, you discover that perception becomes something very easy for you. Um, so, Acts chapter 14, verse 8 to 10. I want somebody to help me. Mark chapter 2, verse 8. I want another person to help me. And 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. I want another person to help me. Oh, yeah. Who is helping me? Okay. So now go back to verse, verse 9. You are doing Amplify for me. Give me, okay, hold it, hold it. Now I want you to look at it. He was listening to Paul as he preached. So as Paul was preaching, the man was listening to Paul. And Paul gazing intently at him. So give me King James because King James did not bracket Paul. That's the point I want to bring out there. Give me, okay. The same had Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving. It is Paul that is perceiving here. Amen. Amen. So we, they were in a church like this. And as they were preaching, so that's why a pastor that is ministering is doing more than just preaching. As he's looking at people, he's doing many other work in the spirit. He's doing many other work in the spirit. There are some people that as the word of God is coming out to them, eh, they are doing like this. Mm, mm, I disagree with that one. And then sometimes when they are doing, I disagree with that one, you know what happened? Instantly, part of the scriptures I did not write down, the Holy Ghost will bring it. I will say, let us open there. Amen? Amen. So let me give you an instance of that, when we did the combined fellowship, the last one we did, 
the last part, I did not plan to open 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 from verse 3. So, but as we were closing, I saw that, and the Holy Ghost brought that, and then I opened 1 Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. And the Bible says, it is the will of God that you abstain from fornication. Ah. So, it was very clear in chapter 3, verse 3, verse 4, verse 5, and very clear. It was because somebody was saying, he said, no, I disagree with what you have said. So we read the Bible, and we read it in different versions. So when a ministration is coming out like this, there are many things that are going on. This was the same method that Jesus used. He will come, he will preach or teach the word, and while he's preaching and teaching, many things begin to take place. The man has never walked in his life. And the preaching of God was, was going on like this. And why Paul was looking at him. And that's why you don't take things for granted. That's why you have to settle down when message is going on. Because many spiritual transactions are going on at the same time. And that's why I used to tell you that one of the characteristics of the devil is that he doesn't allow people to have rest. When you see somebody going up and down, be away, Jubilee, eh? it is not ordinary. One of the characteristics of the Spirit of God is rest. There's that calmness. There's that peace. It's the prince of peace anyway. So when the message is going on, many, many things are happening. It's not that pastor is speaking. No, spiritual transactions are taking place. That is how God operates. There must be preaching of the word and many other things will follow. I can show you that in about 10 scriptures. Matthew chapter 4 verse 23. Can we quickly see that? Matthew 4 23. What was he doing, sir? That's the first thing he has to do. And then what followed? I'm preaching the gospel. Because when you begin to teach this thing, it gets to a point. The Holy Ghost begins to emphasize on something. And it turns to preaching. And what we follow? And that is when healing takes place. You don't come on the pulpit and say, how many of you wants to walk? Let me begin to heal you. No, God does not. Pray. I will show you scripture 10. That is the pattern of God. There's going to be the word of God, and then healing and deliverance will follow. And that's why you can easily differentiate between a fake prophet or a fake man of God and an original man of God. A true man of God will teach you the sound word of God before he talks about healing, miracle, and all of that. A fake one will come up and what we start talking about will just be, oh yeah, let us start your healing. Jesus did not do the work that way. Don't worry, when we start talking about faith, I will go through that route. I will show you all the scripture where Jesus ever healed people and what took place first. You will see that everywhere he first teach the word. Then in some cases, he preached. In fact, in about eight, eight out of ten of those cases, he, pre he preached. Teach, preach, heal, and deliver. So it's not like God is a very disorganized person. No, the whole of the book of Leviticus is talking about how well organized God is. God is not the author of confusion, as in every church. God is not. Let everything be done decently and in order. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. Amen. Amen. So Jesus will normally do that. So in Acts chapter, Acts chapter, what did we read? 14, right? Is it Acts chapter 14? So Paul was teaching and he saw the man. He had faith to be, he said, rise up. 
The man that has never walked before, the man rose up, and that's how he began to walk. He didn't do any prayer for him. There's power in the word. There's power in the word of God. He sent his word and delivered them. He healed them and delivered them from their destruction. There's power in the word. It can heal, it can deliver, but it has to start from the word. Praise God. So having said that, um, perception. So Paul could perceive why the message was going on. And from that perception, he was able to tell the man to rise up and walk. Acts chapter 2 verse 8. Acts chapter 2 verse 8. Acts chapter 2 verse 8. Amen. Amen. So let's, let's turn to our... Let's turn to our... Okay, no, uh, Mark chapter 2 verse 8, sorry. Mark chapter 2 verse 8. So what does the Bible say there? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they saw reason with themselves, he said to them, why reason ye these things in your heart? Do you see what I'm saying now? That happened last Sunday in our combined fellowship. Somebody was thinking, no, I disagree with what you have said. And the Holy Ghost brought a scripture. And I opened it. I said, oh yeah, everybody read. Praise God. So Jesus know what they were discussing. It's called perception. You don't know how you know, but you know. And it happens a lot to mature believers. Uh, mature believers. So um, that's number what now? Number nine. Number ten now. God can speak to us through revelation. God can speak to us through revelation. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 to 12. Amen. Amen. Number ten. God can speak to us through the Bible. Daniel chapter 9. God can speak to us through what? Bible. Bible. So when you read the Bible, God can speak to you. You can read the Bible and God will speak to you. Reading the Bible. So God spoke to Daniel when he read the Bible. Daniel chapter 9. Let's read from verse 1, everybody. Let's stand to our feet to read. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. Okay, let's stand to our feet. Praise God. One of the things we should be used to is hearing God's word for a long time. It does something to our spirit. Hearing God's word for what? A long time. I'm not telling you stories about myself. We are opening from one scripture to another, from one scripture to another, from one scripture to another. Amen. Amen. So let's read together. One, two, go. I want us to give it voice, please. Please read very well, sir. Amas. Amen. Amen. So there are some things you will know what to do by reading the Bible. It may be that they read the Bible to you. It may be that you are reading it on your own. It may be like we are reading it in the church here. So this is how this one happened. You will just see that particular thing fastening on your spirit. It will just stay there. It will not go. That word will just keep coming. It will just stay. It will just stick there. It will not go. That is God speaking to you. So all this message that we have started since after or tonight, till now, out of everything we are saying, somebody may not hear anything. The Holy Ghost can just bring a portion and just stamp it. Pa! And that stamp is the only thing that it will stick to your heart. That is God speaking to you. Good. So God speak to people that way. And to make the matter funny, you now go to house fellowship. Your house fellowship leader starts, and that's where it starts from again. And to make the thing funny, you now say, okay, let me, let me just uh, 
check this YouTube daddy. The same thing is what they say. Ah, are they pursuing me? Praise God. No, God is targeting you. God is what? They call that in digital marketing, they call it target advertising. Target marketing. You've seen where you go to check something online, and everywhere you go to, you keep seeing the advert, and they are targeting you. They say, you will say, will boy. So God is targeting you when you see them things like that. It means that he's speaking to you. So when God is speaking to you and you don't speak the voice of God, he will not proceed. Write it down. Don't forget it. And that will lead me to the principles of how God speaks to men. The principle of what? Please talk to me. The principle of what? So there are basic principles of how God speaks to men. So when God is speaking to you, and you don't understand, it will not proceed. So, when God is speaking to you, you don't understand, you will not proceed. So, I've started talking about the principles behind how God speaks to people. Okay? I showed you one of them the other time. So, write it, the headings now, the principles of how God speaks to men. Number one, if God is speaking to you and you don't understand any of these ways that is God that is speaking to you, he will not proceed. Let's go to Samuel. First Samuel. First Samuel, chapter, chapter 9. First Samuel, chapter 9. And First Samuel, chapter 3, sorry. Verse 9. So look at what the Bible says. Um, okay, should I read from verse 9? Let me read from verse 4. Verse 4. That the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here I am. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here I am, for thou callest me. And he said, I call not. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. Everybody read verse 6. Amen. So that's why I said the children should join us. God started speaking to Samuel. Samuel was taken to church to be working in the church from age six or thereabout, age five, four, five, six. And then they sold the clothes of a priest for him, small clothes that fit him very well. And all he does is to close the door. Okay. So make sure there's light. He just take care of things in the church. Very small priest. And he's going up and down. And then a day is coming. God has been looking at the boy. And God wanted to speak to him. And God called him Samuel. So God is not going to say because you are a small boy he won't speak to you. No, no. In fact, it's even better for God to relate with you because you're a small boy. Joash was eight years old when he began to reign. How many of you have read that? So in the scriptures, God used, the Bible says, out of the mouth of babes and suckling, as he what? Ordained strength. Ah, some people have not read that before. Out of the mouth of babies 
and sucklings. Who are sucklings? People that are still sucking breast. As he ordains strength. The Bible says, children are arrow in the hand of the Lord. So, when God is targeting a particular situation on the earth, and he wants to change it, he picks children. He begins to breathe upon their spirit for that purpose. So, one of the ways that God will start that process is that he will start to communicate with you. So, one of the challenges we have is that we used to feel that I'm a small boy, oh. Anyway, go speak to me. God can leave your daddy and your mommy and come and speak to you. He will just leave them and then focus on you. So God left Eli and came to that boy. And that boy was a very small boy. So when he woke up, he said, ah, daddy, 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 you call me. He said, I didn't call you. Go back and sleep. He woke up again. Daddy, daddy, you call me. He said, I didn't call you. Go and sleep. Praise God. It's not only computer game that children should know how to play. They should know how to hear the voice of God. Our generation seems to box the children to the corner that they cannot, they cannot know God at a certain level. And when you grow up, you will begin to, you begin to hear about God. You need to give your life to Christ at age four. As a child, the moment the child knows his left from his right, he needs to be born again. You see small children that they put witchcraft into them. There was one that the man and the woman, they beat each other. Eh? And then they get the girl. Say, what did you do to your ogre? Saying, I used to cross the slippers. It's behind the fridge. Anytime... I want them to beat each other. I'll cross the slippers. They'll beat each other very well. And then I'll go and separate it. I remember one that I went to meet my friends that we used to pray together some 20 years ago in his shop. Bro Sam. And he said, Bro Sam, write anything on the paper. I will tell you what you write. And so Brossam was in his shop here. He went to where that book is. Brossam will write something on the paper. He will come back. He said, you write seven. He said, write another one. Brossam now said, okay, go. He didn't write anything. He came back. He said, you didn't write anything. He said, go. He writes, jaka jaka. He said, okay, what did I write? He said, you wrote jaka jaka. The small girl has a familiar spirit. So if children can have evil spirits, they have the capacity to hear God. You should be focused on your children that way. Don't leave them to chances and start forcing them to follow God when they are teenagers. And those are part of the reason why I used to go and take the children to church. It's very important for you to understand that God can speak to children. So, the principle we are looking at here is when God is speaking to you through any of those methods we have mentioned, and you are not picking that God is speaking to you, he will not say anything again. So, look at it. Let's read. Let's read. And that will lead us to another principle. Verse 9 now. Okay, read verse 8 for me. Oh yeah, go ahead, verse 9. Okay, so God did not say anything. God did not do what? He just keep calling him. 
why he does not understand that God is the one speaking to him. That is why I have to teach you the ways that God speaks to men. So that when God is speaking to you, you can say, speak, Lord, for your servant is hearing. Because God is not going to say anything. When he gives you a body, and you, are, you cannot interpret it, he will wait for you to be able to say, speak, Lord, your servant is hearing. Then he will begin to speak. So three times. So if Eli was not there to put him through, that means God is going to keep quiet. So, what's number one principle? What's number one principle? It does not proceed. Okay, so please understand that and write it down. Okay, so now let's look at verse 10 now. Verse 10, let's read together everybody. Verse 11 now. And the Lord said, Amen. Amen. And the Lord did what? Yes. And the Lord said. The Lord did not say before. But the moment Samuel picked the signal that it is God that is speaking to me, what happened? And the Lord said. That's number one principle. Don't forget it. Number two principle is that when you see a revelation two to three times, it is coming to pass very fast. So we saw that in Genesis chapter 41, verse what now? Genesis 41, verse what? Verse 32. And we also saw that in the book of um, Art of the Apostle, chapter 10, verse what now? Art of the Apostle, chapter 10, verse what? Um, so I'm going to bring out Genesis for us. Genesis 41, verse 32 is the first place. And Acts chapter, we saw that in Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. And then verse, um, okay, so we saw that in verse, Verse 13 to 16. Acts chapter 10, verse 13 to 16. And we also saw that in 1 Samuel chapter 3, from verse 4 to verse, um, to verse 21. Let me just read it to verse 21. So how many times did God call um, Samuel? Three times. He was trying to say something to him. What God spoke to Samuel, you know, he spoke it to another prophet. He, so that means he has said it how many times? And that thing happened quickly. Amen. Amen. So when you see something like that, two times or three times, it means it's coming to pass quickly. That means you should take action on time. Praise God. Okay, so that's principle number one is what? Okay, you understand that one, Abby? So what is point two now, the second principle? Okay, so please let's have a seat. Amen. Amen. So the third principle is the principle of God speaks to us sometimes with symbols. The principles of symbols. So in the spirit language is mostly symbols. That is images and videos. Images, videos, voice. Images, video, voice. So please don't forget that symbols. Symbols. Okay, so um, let me give you a scripture for that one. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. So let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. What does the Bible say there? The Bible says, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show to his servant things. Everybody say things. Which must come to pass, which must shortly come to pass. 
and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Okay, so you discover that God now begins to speak about pictures and images in the book of Revelation. That is God speaking his word. Now, let's go to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 1. So, in the book of Ezekiel, you also see God talking about, um, God talking about this. So, you see, uh, verse 1. Now, it came to pass in the 13th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives of the river of Sheba, that the heavens were opened, and I saw the visions of God. Verse 3, the word of the Lord came expressly to Ezekiel, the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the rivers of Sheba, and the hand of the Lord was dear upon him. Verse 10, and as for the likeness of their faces, they had for the face of a man and the face of an iron, of a lion and the face of the right and the force at the face of an horse and on the left they had the they had four they had the face of an eagle so you see that verse 1 verse 3 verse 10 of Ezekiel chapter 1 talking about the word of the Lord in form of images revelation chapter 1 verse 1 talking about the word of the Lord in form of things images so when you see images like that, it's a way that God communicates. Images are communications of the spirit. Praise God. And when you dream, you normally think that, oh, I saw this, I saw all those, I saw red, I saw number seven, I saw number six, all of them as many. Praise God. Whenever you are picking the meaning of your dream or the meaning of your revelation, it must, the interpretation must be from the Spirit of God, guided by the Word of God. Please take note of that. So, what is principle number one, everybody? It will not proceed. What is number two? It's coming to pass shortly. What is number three? Number four, God answer you according to what you have in your heart before you begin to pray. Ezekiel 14, 14. If you are going to God and you are praying about a particular thing, it is that thing you have in your heart that God will use as an answer for you. Ezekiel 14, 14. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel... Um, am I correct? No, this is not what I want to read. He said, I will answer them according to the idols in their heart. Ezekiel 14, 14. Ezekiel 14, 14. Am I correct? I don't think that's the scripture I want to read. If any man come to me with idol in his heart, Ezekiel 14, verse Let's read from verse 2. No, verse 3. Son of man, these men have set up idols in their heart and have put a stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired at them? Therefore speak unto them, say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, every man of the house of Israel that set up his idol in his heart and put the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and come to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idol. Ezekiel 14.4, not 14.14. 14. Ezekiel 14.4, 14. not 14.14. 14. Please take note of that. So God answer people when they have, according to the idols of their heart, if they have idol in their heart. Okay, so that's the... Number what now? Number. Okay, so let's go to the next point. The next point is that God is the one that will choose the way he wants to speak to you. Who chooses the way we want to speak to you? 
you cannot dictate for God and say, God, if you are the one that you are speaking to me, I want to know. As I go to sleep now, let me dream that my brother is going to come. Praise God. If God chooses, he can answer that. If he chooses, he may not answer that. It does not mean it's not God. God chooses the way he will speak to you. Tell somebody that. Is God. You can't be commanding him. He's not your house help. Amen. Turn to another person and say, God is the one that will choose the way we speak to you. So out of the, how many ways did I tell you that God speaks to us? How many ways have I given you? No, 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 no. Those are principles. Is it ten? Out of all those ten ways, God will now pick two to three particular ways, and he will be speaking to you. So write it down under this point. God will choose what? Two to three. That is the customized way of speaking to Debbie. He will pick that two to three. That two to three that he used to speak to Debbie may be different from the one he used to speak to Dotu. That two to three that he used to speak to Dotu may be different from the way he used to speak to Obisola. He will just pick a two to three set that he will customize to you. And he will be using that to speak to you. Please write it down. Don't forget. And then the next point is that God we choose. Please don't forget that point too. Is the one that decides how he will speak to you, and is the one that we choose two to three out of those ways, and he will use that to speak to you. The Holy Ghost wants me to emphasize it. That is why I'm coming back. He will choose two to three, and he will be speaking to you through to that three ways. Okay? Now, the next point is that. There is pattern in the way God speaks to people. There is what? Pattern. pattern. So, what does pattern mean? Pattern means if God is speaking to you about your marriage through dream, he will keep on speaking to you about your marriage through dreams. Am I communicating? If he speaks to you about where you are going to live by you hearing a voice, he will keep speaking to you about the place you are going to live with hearing voice. If he wants you to relocate, he will speak to you by hearing voice. He will maintain that pattern. He will do what? He will do what? Please don't forget there is pattern. So he will pick two to three ways. I said you put that one under that point. Then he will maintain a pattern. Then the next one is that he uses prophet and pastors to confirm. To do what? To confirm. What many people want prophet and pastor to do is to tell them what to do. Say, okay, go and marry Janet. Go and marry Juliana. Go and marry Joanna. No. That is not what we are to do in the New Testament. What we are to do in the New Testament is to confirm. Is to do what? What is the meaning of confirmation? Confirmation means that you already have an information. But because you are thinking, ah, hey, is this God? Oh, this is not God, oh. Hey. So somebody now come up and say, Okay, the Lord said this, or you mentioned the issue, and the person said, This is what God said to me, like a confirmation. Am I communicating? Like a confirmation. Please don't forget, I think on that, you may want to write down Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Should we get that down? And uh, are we going to be able to read that? Uh, the Bible says, after this thing, there were certain prophets and teachers. I'm thinking that I may be able to get that scripture. Certain prophets and teachers. Um...
Okay. Um, okay, I, I am trying to pull that scripture where the Bible says there are certain prophets are teacher. Uh, I think it's in Jerusalem. Okay, so let's look at Acts chapter 20, verse 21. You may just write that down. Okay, so the Bible says, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greek, repentance and repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me, save the Holy Ghost, witness in every city, saying, bonds and affliction abide me. Okay? Um, let me explain it this way. Maybe you will get what I want to say. Um, there were certain prophets that came to Paul, and they said, the man that owned this gadu, I don't know if someone can get me that scripture, the man that owned this gadu will, will receive a lot of beating as he moved from city to city. And then the people begin to cry. And then he said, why do you weep to break my heart? I am not only going to preach the gospel, I am also willing to die for the gospel. Praise God. So now in verse 21 here, is now saying that testifying to the, okay, verse 22, and now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witness in every city, so what he means by that statement is that there are people confirming to me that there is wala ahead. So there are things that the Spirit of God will lead you into and it may not be smooth. Amen. It may not be what? It may not be smooth. It doesn't mean it's not God. I hope you get that. I think we should write it down as a principle. So, but I want you to write Bible passage for that one. Acts chapter 20, verse 21, 22, 23, 24. What mean ye to weep and to break my heart? Can you get me that scripture? Okay. Okay. Can you? That's chapter 21. Okay, uh, chapter 21, verse 13, right? Okay, good. Look at, look at verse, act, you can also have this, at chapter 21, verse 10. At chapter 21, verse 10. Look at what the Bible says. Okay, let's even read from verse 9. And the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. Verse 10, and we tarried there many days. And there came down from Judah a certain prophet named, please read to me, name what? Agapos. What did prophet Agapos said? Okay, please stand to your feet, everybody. Stand to your feet, everybody. Please come. Please come. Okay, you have you have suit. I will use your suit. So the prophet came. There are some prophets that used to come with demonstration. Praise God. They come with what? Times like that, you know, the spirit witnessing can be with demonstration. So look at Acts chapter 20. Verse um, 22, 23, 24. Paul was saying, bounce. Okay, let's read verse 22 together. Everybody. Okay, you want to give us on the screen? I didn't want them to give us on the screen before, but you can give us on the screen. 
Oh yeah, let's read now. One, two, go all together. Do we have it? Okay, everybody, read from the screen. One, two, go. No, give me Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, verse 22. I, you know, I said that the pastor and the prophet are to do what? To confirm. I'm trying to establish that from the scripture. And I've taken a lot of time on the point, so I must establish it. Let me quickly get to the bottom. Okay, so let's go now. So look at, this is Paul the Apostle. This is what Paul was saying. It's Paul that is talking here. So read what Paul was saying. Okay, so give me good news or amplified so that someone can understand that English. Because when somebody sees bound like that now, what comes to his mind is they tie him with rope. So, um, if you understand that scripture, it will, okay, so let's go now. Not knowing what to what? So, you can see compare, constraint. You remember constraint? Okay, so the Holy Ghost speak to Paul by what? Constraint. He said, ah, the Holy Ghost is compelling me very heavily. I have to go down to that place. I don't know what will be for me there. Next verse. Verse 23. Amen. What await him? So the only, who, who led him? What await him? Who led him? What is awaiting him? Sir, who led him? Some people don't like this type of leading. <laughs> Praise God. Okay, so look at the confirmation side. Confirmation.